The Galen Maxwell trial has started, and it's important that we understand who the prosecutors are, who is the team that is coming together to try to finally convict Galen Maxwell. Of course, we know her as being Jeffrey Epstein's number two. Some of the same people that prosecuted Jeffrey Epstein are going to be back in this case. But let's take a look at the high-level overview. Who are the different people who are involved in the trial, generally speaking? We have Judge Allison Nathan. We can see her here at the top. We have Galen Maxwell over here on the right. She is the defendant, of course being charged with the crimes. Bobby Sternheim is her main defense lawyer. She has a defense sort of dream team that she has built, and we'll talk about them in a different video. Damian Williams is the U.S. attorney out of the Southern District of New York, and the unknown person is symbolically representing all of the sealed, unnamed individuals who are part of this case. We saw that back on November 16th and November 17th, we started jury selections, and this comes directly from the court's minute entries. <clears throat> we can see that Galen Maxwell had several different attorneys present. She had Bobby Sternheim, we heard from her, Jeff Pagliuca, we have Christian Everdell, we've got Lauren Menninger, and we have Renato Stable. From the government, we have the assistant U.S. attorneys, Laura Pomerantz. We have Maureen Comey, going to dig into her. We have Allison Moe, Andrew Rohrbach, all representing the government. Court reporters are there. We saw that on November 16th and November 17th, we had two full days of jury selection, which, of course, carried on considerably longer than that, but we saw, once again, the U.S. attorneys showed up. Laura Pomerantz, Maureen Comey, Allison Moe were there for the government. So it looks like Andrew didn't show up on the 17th, but you can see by and large, we know who the government's team is going to be. Let's take a look at who these individuals are. We saw previously Damian Williams. He is the SDNY Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney. We have Laura Pomerantz. We're going to read more about her. Maureen Comey, that last name Comey might ring a bell for some of you. Allison Moe could not find a picture of her anywhere. And Andrew Rohrbach, also Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, which is what that abbreviation stands for. They are prosecuting Galen Maxwell on a number of these different charges. You can see there's a whole slew of them, all involving some pretty heavy stuff. And so what we want to do is go through each one of these prosecutors and see what we can learn about them. Starting at the top, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Damian Williams, nominated August 2021, so he's brand new, confirmed to the Senate October 2021. And you can see he's a very hip guy with that sort of pose, you know, the uh, one of these deals. He's kind of doing that, one of those deals. So, uh, so uh, you know, kind of young, brand new to the division, and he is the chief federal law enforcement officer for the district. Prior to this, where was he? Chief of Securities, Commodities Fraud, Assistant U.S. Attorney. So he worked for the DOJ for a long time. Prosecuted white-collar cases involving corruption in financial markets and politics. Among others, prosecuted Congressman Chris Collins for insider training, trading for lying to the FBI and other things. Mr. Williams went to Harvard, got his economics degree there international relations jd from yale law school harvard and yale must be a very intelligent man he served as a law clerk to judge merrick garland u.s court of appeals and then to justice john paul stevens over at the supreme court so that is the guy in charge now he is the chief u.s attorney out of the southern district of new york he's the top dog over there and so he's not going to be probably in court doing the day-to-day -day litigation he's going to turn that over to his assistant u.s attorneys the first of whom is here laura pomerantz and there was an interesting article that i was able to find about her from 2015 looks like it was actually a wedding announcement that was published over at the new york times very difficult often to find information about prosecutors. They keep a very low profile, rightfully so. They're prosecuting alleged criminals. And so they don't typically you know, put out a bunch of stuff on Instagram about where they're having lunch or about what they're upset about that happened to them in the uh, mall that day. So here we have Laura Pomerantz. We're able to find a little bit about her. This came out from the New York Times back on October 18th, 2015. And you can see that they were married. Laura Elizabeth Pomerantz and Jonah Ari Pepiati were married Saturday evening in an outdoor ceremony out somewhere in New York. She's 31. She kept her name. She was a litigation associate at Simpson, Thatcher, and Barlett. In November, though, she's going to begin working as a U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. And so November 2015, 
all the way up until 2021. So she's been there for about six years. Graduated summa cum laude at, from Duke, became a Fulbright scholar, conducting research on sex education at various schools, including in the Dominican Republic. Law degree cum laude from University of Pennsylvania, daughter of Ruth Tauber Pomerantz, and Bruce A. Pomerantz. And so that is Laura. You can see the full spread picture here of them. Getting married looks like a nice, happy couple. Hopefully, they're still in love and doing well. So they are now, uh, she is now prosecuting Galen Maxwell. We saw that she showed up on November 16th for jury selection. Another U.S. attorney, somebody that uh, might ring a bell, is Maureen Comey. Maureen Comey is right here in the middle. Maureen Comey. Remember that last name, Comey, James Comey? We heard a lot about him over the last four years, and this is his daughter, and she is now prosecuting Galen Maxwell. And James Comey, of course, was somebody who was at the FBI responsible uh, for a lot of investigations involving Donald Trump, no longer with the FBI, but his daughter is with the DOJ prosecuting Galen Maxwell. Very interesting. Now, as I mentioned, prosecutors don't have a lot of information about themselves out there. So I was able to find this about Maureen. She has something over on Twitter. I'm sorry, on LinkedIn says that she was a U.S. attorney from 2015 to present. So she's been there for about six years, right about the same length of time as Laura. Also went to Harvard Law School, which is the same place as Damien. And so it says here that she is also the assistant U.S. attorney. She was a clerk previously for a judge out of the Southern District of New York, Loretta Preska, which is a different judge, not the judge that this case is in front of. Uh, otherwise, maybe that would be a conflict. Uh, maybe they would say it's not. But uh, here's a picture of Miss Maureen. And I think it's this one on the right. I think this is probably her other sister over here. And they kind of look similar. But I, but I think that this is actually... Maureen, if I had to guess, and they're just laughing away, yucking it up as James Comey's cracking a joke in front of Congress, which was uh, most of his testimony there. So, you know, uh, everybody's having a good time. Now, Maureen is also somebody who sings. She's got quite a voice on her. Let's listen in. Going to happen. So I'm, I'm not very sophisticated, not exactly my cup of tea, but sounds beautiful. I'm sure somebody likes it somewhere. This is also another image of Miss Maureen Comey. And you can see that we're talking about the U.S. versus Jeffrey Epstein. But Jeffrey Epstein is uh, allegedly dead now. So the question is... What's she doing there and on this case? Well, she's pros she prosecuted both of them. She prosecuted Jeffrey Epstein. Now she's prosecuting number two. So she's been involved in these cases for quite some time. And if you recall, there were some interesting things that happened with Jeffrey Epstein's case. You know, he was this very, very powerful person who seemed to operate with total Im impunity much of his life, in fact, most of it, and then suddenly came under high scrutiny. And when the news started to tighten, as they say, he ended up allegedly killing himself. And then when we tried to figure out how that all went down, there were some problems with that because everything happened to fail in the prison that night, including all of the surveillance footage. And guess who was around when all that happened? Maureen Comey. That's right. Washington Post says video from Epstein's first apparent suicide attempt is lost due to technical errors, say prosecutors. So when Jeffrey Epstein was being prosecuted and then allegedly killed himself in his cell, they couldn't find the video because of technical errors. This was published on January 9th, 2020. You might have missed it. A lot of other stuff was happening around those times. But it was lost, then it was found, and now it is gone. So goes the saga of video footage from outside the jail cell. Multimillionaire sex offender Jeffrey Epstein recorded on the day that he may have first tried to kill himself. So that's gone. Federal prosecutors said in December they're unable to locate the video, which would have showed guards finding Epstein after his first apparent suicide attempt in July. Then just a day later, they wrote into court filing they had found the footage and were in the process of obtaining a copy. 
But then on Thursday, they reversed themselves again, saying the video no longer exists because of technical errors. Jail officials initially thought they'd save the footage from outside of Epstein's cell, when in fact the footage they preserved was from a different facility. Who explained all of that? U.S. Attorney's Maureen Comey. Oh, very interesting. And so that's not actually the, the, the footage of him dying, but that is footage of other suicide attempts, allegedly, that took place previously. And so the, the people who were sort of in charge of the prosecution, people like James Comey's daughter, Maureen Comey, she writes a letter, uh, we have a copy of it, but then we kind of don't have a copy of it. Uh, and then it's all just kind of lost for technical errors. And that happened it looks like before he actually died. So then they are uh, on notice that, uh, you know, this stuff, this stuff might be problematic. And uh, the prosecutors who were in charge of prosecuting Galen Maxwell, they kind of botched it on the last one, didn't they? So that is Maureen Comey. And we're going to hear a lot more from her as I'm sure she's going to be leading the charge prosecuting Galen Maxwell. The next prosecutor we have, Allison Moe. Don't know much about her. But couldn't find a photograph of her. But apparently she's a lecturer in the law. She's adjunct faculty over at Columbia University. She is also, according to the bio there, says she's an assistant U.S. attorney with the U.S. Attorney's Office for SDNY, the Southern District of New York. She's a member of the office's public corruption unit. Uh, before joining the U.S. Attorney's Office, she was a law clerk to Joseph Bianco of the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York, also U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit was counsel for the New York City Law Department, and she received her JD from Columbia Law School, BA from Dartmouth, which is why she's now lecturing there. So she went back, well, a lot of uh, lawyers do this, they'll go back and they'll actually teach at their school. And you can see these are some of the classes that she's teaching. So you can't really dig in and figure out what sh her subject matter expertise is. You can just see legal practice workshop, legal practice workshop, one and two. And so you don't really know what's in there probably motion writing, filing motions, you know, formatting your your motions in limine properly, that type of stuff. So we have Andrew Rohrbach, who is the final U.S. attorney. Know a little bit more about him. Also looks like a Harvard guy, U.S. attorney and 500 connections. Let's see. So he's a little bit younger. So he's only been there since June 2019. The other attorneys have been there for quite some time longer. I think about 2015 is when they started, but he has been over at the civil division, part of the appellate staff prior to that. So been with the U.S. D Department of Justice for, for some time, since about 2017. Then was a law clerk at the U.S. District Court, Court of Appeals, two different Court of Appeals. And so he's been around for some time as well. And so those are the U.S. attorneys who are prosecuting Galen Maxwell. And it's going to be a trying prosecution. We are, of course, also going to be monitoring the defense team. Glenn Maxwell's defense dream team being led by Bobby Sternheim. And so there's going to be a lot of back and forth. This is a very important trial. Much of it is not going to be covered in the mainstream media. And a lot of it is just not going to be talked about by anybody because it's not going to be televised and it's not going to be audio recorded. And so we're going to have to dissect this thing bit by bit from the court minute entries, from the Twitter reports, from the other journalists who were inside the courtroom. And we're going to continue to follow those minute entries day by day and hope that you join us as we continue to cover Galen Maxwell. Be sure that you hit the subscribe button. Would appreciate a like and a comment. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.